Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more historic here on Magic Arena. And we took a few days break, uh, you know, for the Christmas holiday, but we are still wrapping up deck timber. There are still just a couple of days left. So um, yeah, we're excited to be back. We're playing a sweet new deck submitted by one of our uh, other friends here in Discord by the name of Salty. So thank you, Salty, for submitting this deck. But real quick, let's talk about deck timber, what it has been and what it is and what it will continue to be hopefully in the future. So deck timber is again my way of saying thank you so much to each and every one of you for helping to grow the channel so i am playing viewer submitted decks all throughout the month of december and we are playing a few games then we're going to talk about it we're going to make some changes we're going to play some more games and then we are just going to at the end in the wrap up talk about what we thought about it overall uh, our changes hopefully we were able to bounce some ideas um you know based on on the deck that you put together and then off of ourselves and hopefully maybe we're still able to just continuously bounce these decks together to make or these ideas together to make these improvements and maybe we'll create something great um, or even just fun in general. So that's what we're going for in deck timber. And again, if you still want to be considered for a deck in deck timber, there's just a couple of days left. So please, please, please. All you have to do, join the discord. The link is down below. Head over to the deck timber channel and grab the template out of the pin post and you too could be maybe tomorrow's deck. So with that being said, uh, again, if you enjoy the channel and the video, please, all I ask, like, comment, subscribe, check out all the links down below. It's as simple as that. Anything you can do, free interactions to help grow the channel. But let's uh, hop into this deck. And again, this deck is a huge thanks to Salty. This deck is called Narcbo. So this is a um, Night Pack Ambusher deck with Vivian's Arcbow. Vivian's Arcbow is a really cool card. Um, but yeah, we, we played a deck similar to this a couple months ago, I think back in October. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a cool deck. It's very heavy creatures. You're we're pretty much gonna have every um non-land permanent in our deck is gonna be a creature except for the Vivian's Arc Bows. So Vivian Vivian's Arc Bow, if you're not familiar, two mana artifact. It is legendary, but it says tap uh, X and tap it, discard a card, look at the top X cards of your library. You may pay um you may put a creature card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you get to discard, uh, you discard a card, and then at that point, you however much mana you pay into it, we're gonna look at that many cards, and then we're gonna put a creature that has, um, hopefully, you know, five mana, if we're paying five mana into it, we're gonna put it into play. So we're gonna be able to hit um, cards like Tulsimir. Tulsimir is a really cool card, it's a five mana, three, three, you know, not the best stats there. But when Tulsmere comes into play, we actually get to create a legendary 3-3 wolf that um, is named uh, Voha or Voja. And this 3-3 uh, three, three wolf uh, also gets to fight another creature that we don't control. Well, all of our wolves get to fight another creature that we don't control whenever they come into play with uh, Tulsimir. And then we're going to gain three life. So we do actually get really good value there whenever we do this. Um so there is that and um this also like i said combos uh with our other car that we mentioned first night pack ambusher so this is a wolf so we're going to fight when the wolf when this wolf comes into play this four mana flash four four this wolf was the thing of nightmares back when uh simic flash kind of ruled the, the streets uh, of historic and standard for a little while uh, but it says other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one plus one uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So the 2-2 that we get is going to be actually a 3-3 because this wolf gives it plus one, plus one. Uh, and then at this point, we're probably not going to try not to cast any spells during our turn because we, we are going to have access to Vivian's Arcbow to be able to put creatures in play as an instant on our opponent's turn. Um, we can even try doing this during our turn um because this is not casting this is just putting it into play and then since we're not casting on our turn we're going to be getting wool extra wolves on our turn and then we're just going to be interacting on our opponent's turn uh doing things in response uh one of those things is putting frilled mystics into play we can counter a spell when they come into play that's really really powerful uh we have questing beast questing beast is really good um you know f basically flashing this in at the end of their turn and then on our turn we can just swing in for four kill some planeswalkers potentially we also have deputy detentions. We could potentially 
uh, exile target non-land permanents and any cards that share a name with that permanent. So this is good against tokens or if our opponent's just playing multiples of something. Uh, Prowling Serp uh, Serpapard. So this is an interesting uh, inclusion. So I'm sure Salty was playing this in best of three. They did actually mention in their write-up that they did get into Mythic playing this deck. So this deck does appear to be something that could be uh, competitive. I mean, hitting Mythic is no real easy feat. You know, it, it does take a lot of persistence. So I'm sure this is probably good. I know blue-white is a thing. Um, and it was a thing, you know, ever since it won the Zendikar Rising Championship. So this says this spell can't be countered, which is already good for a three mana four three. And then it says creature spells you control can't be countered. So pretty good ability there. Um, you know, they, they have a sideboard in here probably for best of three. But again, we're not going to really pay attention to the sideboard. Uh, and then they have a bunch of mana dorks. So we got four land or elves, four pa uh, paradise druids. Paradise druids great in a three color deck uh, again, because, you know, can't always rely on on the correct land drops so this being able to potentially power out something um in a different color that maybe we need maybe we need that extra blue for the frilled mystic and then it has hexproof as long as it's on tap so it's going to be a little harder for our opponents to deal with it and then on top of that charming prince so charming prince when it enters the battlefield we can scry gain three life or we could basically exile a creature we we own and then return it back to the battlefield so this could, you know, reset deputy detentions. It can actually reset uh, Tulsimir to make another token if we need to. Uh, just stuff like that is actually, we actually gain some extra value. And it does seem pretty, pretty cool and pretty valuable to do that. So uh, we are wrapping this up with 24 lands of the deck, uh, a bunch of shocks, a bunch of uh, check lands, and then some basics. So that is what we're doing here. And uh, again, a huge shout out to Salty for submitting this sweet looking uh, Vivian's Arc Bow deck. Uh, again, titled Narc Bow. And again, if you want to be considered for one of the last couple days of Decktember, join the Discord, head down to the Decktember channel, and submit your deck list using the template found in the pin post. So it's as simple as that. And let's hop into the gameplay. We're going to be back in a few, just a few short games. And we're going to talk about this deck, make some changes, and then play some more. All right, see you guys soon. All right. We get to play the Salty Narcbow deck. I mean, it's the deck's not called Sal Salty Narcbow, just Narcbow, submitted by Salty, as, as previously heard and discussed. So, you know what we need, though? We need an opponent. Get an opponent. Let's do it. Let's do it. Zurag. Let's do it to it. All right, so we're going first. I don't hate it. This isn't the best hand. I really like, I really would have liked to have seen, oh, well, hello. Obviously an elf or some form of scrying or oh, playing against merfolk. Okay, okay, okay. Get these branch walkers going. Do it. Oh, you don't want to keep all the bad merfolk on top? Alright, so we definitely need... We definitely need some land. All right, the old Miss Binder. All right, we are blocking, blocking, blocking. We're gonna deputy detention the Miss Binder, and then I think we're gonna be okay. Eh. I guess we're gonna play another one of these. This is gonna prevent them from attacking with the Miss Binder. Maybe causing them to play another Mistbinder, which we actually get extra value out of if they deputy detention. I mean, in a perfect world that happens, but we stumbled on land, so. Kamena Speaker. Hmm. I think Biomancer. Hmm. I gotta think about this now.
I think we're gonna take it. So we we get to deputy. Um, still not drawing land, which is unfortunate. Um, I don't want to attack, because if we attack, even though obviously they're not going to block, it's going to give them a free attack on the way back, because ours can't trade with either one of theirs. So I would just prefer to keep a blocker. Biomancer is pretty good. Allows them to adapt. Wow, another Mistbinder. Okay. It's pretty good. Alright, what do we do? Do we block? I think we do. I think we do. Alright, finally a land. Shock that in. No attack. Let's go. All right, so we each drew a land. This is still really good. I mean, they they have for them, not for us. Um I think we have to try to hit like a Tulsimir or something. We have to wait for them to attack. Because this mirror Reedry is going to make stuff really complicated with the way it works with casting, to tap, to untap. Sure thing. And then we need to resolve... And we need to hit good. Just have to hope they don't have a one drop, right? Oh, we just draw Tulsimir? That's a good draw. That was a great draw. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get in for one. I don't really see them having a draw right here that's just going to kill us. I know we are low at five, but... I think that's fine. Kumena is pretty good. Back-to-back -back Tulsimirs, huh? They get to fight the other Mistbinder. <sighs> Seems pretty good, right? Seems pretty good. Up to eight. But... If they just, uh, I was about to say, if they chain together Merfolk, we're going to lose this Kamena's draw ability. And Collected Company is a way for them to quickly draw out of it. Followed by Branch Walker. That's pretty good. And land was pretty good for them. They just netted so many cards that turn. Okay. We could attack. Could also Charming Prince exile the Deputy of Detention. But that's going to bring back a bunch of 2-2s. Two it's going to let them draw a card. 
think we just go for it, right? Interesting. I think we arc bow for one, do we? No, I think we just take a draw. I think we're just gonna swing in. They can't block the questing beast. Oh my gosh, they can. They can just draw all the collected companies though. Now they're going to be able to pump all of their... Wow. Oh. What a gross series of events. How lucky were they with their draws? So I think we're going to do this in response. We're going to go for five. I think, I think we just have to get really lucky with something. Oh, deputy of detention. What do we get rid of? I wonder if we should have done this in response, right? So if we get rid of this, could get rid of Miro Regery. This is a really, this is a really interesting call, right? Kumena's easily the worst threat. Kumena lets our Tulsimir live. We'll still lose our Wolf. It'll let our Questing Beast live as well. Yeah, I think. Oh, never mind. It won't. Oh, and you have it. Of course, you have another one. I mean. And then you have uh, another Murpho can kill us? No? I mean, we, we have to block, right? Is there any draw that gets us out of this? I don't think so. Don't think so. I think we have to hold on. Let's see. So, Charming Prince. Charming Prince Tulsimir. Tulsimir comes back into play. But then Kumena. I don't really know if maybe we arc both for four first. It's probably the right play because our top our top end is Tulsimir. Our four drops are Questing Beasts, Rilled Mystics, and the Wolves. Um, so I think we have to exile. Exiling this doesn't. I guess this permanently does get rid of Kamena. Right? Yeah, we can't actually... Can't actually arc bow. You get to draw a card, but then what's our pull, right? Our, I, don't, I, I just think this is an unwinnable situation. Um, 
We take this. We die to the unblockable. We take this. I think we have to take God, I think we have to take the mirror regery. What a what a what a horribly lucky Merfolk player, right? Yep. Yep, we're at one. Something good? Oh, land is not good. So we are... We are dead. We are dead. Cancel attacks. All right, your turn. All right, well, we're going to scoop him up. Scoop him up and head on to the next game. Ooh, that was a close game. Those uh, those two collected companies in a row were pretty brutal, right? We actually had the game until the first collected company, and then the second one was just the icing on the cake because I actually felt like we were recovering pretty nicely. So, all right, next game. All right, well, every game, too, deserves some hydration. Really, every game... Deserve some hydration. Got to make sure you're getting out of your seat and hydrating. So we are on a off curve hand. Can't keep that. I think we have to keep this. So I think the deputy detentions are going to be more valuable than the Tulsimir. Depending on which version of Lurus this is, probably going to be the white version. Oh, it's of course it's the Rakdos version. So we're not, we didn't just get thought seized on turn one or turn two, which is good. I wonder if they just bring Luris back here. They do. Interesting. So, I don't know what this deck does against a questing beast. Yeah, you can have you can have the Paradise Druid. And we'll and we'll take two. We're not going to get shocked or or stomped here. You can draw a car, a couple cards. Yeah. No, oh, it's pretty good. That is a uh, pretty good turn. A pretty good turn. Alright, so what's in the graveyard they can get back? So do we Dread Horde Arcanist here? Or do we get rid of the Dread That's what I meant. Do we get rid of the Dread Horde Arcanist? They can claim that though. Stupid claim target. I think we have to. I think we have to. <laughs> A 
block. Yep. I mean, they still... They don't have a push in their hand. They would have pushed there. So they can claim this, sack it. Yeah, they still get to push us if they can do... If they have a claim. Oh, so they're on the version that just plays Bedevil. Okay. What an interesting, interesting deck they're playing. Well, I mean, the good news is they're... They're using their removal to... Get rid of stuff that really des doesn't necessarily matter, but we have to get rid of that. We can't have them recasting these cards. They should slam Luris. They have a. Oh, uh, what is our life right now? Like for real? And they get to f uh, they get to fame this. And they get to claim their five five. Oh, really? What? Yeah. And you get to play your get to play your vessel from the graveyard. Oh, this is not going too good. What did they have go to the graveyard this turn? Oh, the, the vessel. So... Eight, nine... Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen... Are we dead or are we at one? Oh, nice, 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 dude. Well, 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 well. Opponents have had some sick draws against us. Good game. We're scrying. Doesn't even matter. Oh. You're gonna rub it in? Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. You could just kill us. We have no cards in our hand. Not enough blockers. Alright, well. Mini boss time. Mini boss time. Alright. Time for the mini boss. Hopefully we can get uh, at least one win here in the series of games before we start doing making some tweaks. All right, no green mana. Cannot keep that. We go first. We're gonna keep. I think. I think the serpent pot is the weakest card, right? So this is a gruel deck from the looks of it. What's kind of brutal is, let's say they have some crazy turn where they get to play a whole bunch of Burning Tree Emissaries. We Deputy of Detention them. And then they kill the Deputy and then they get to get all that mana back for free and they're going to actually net mana. So they're just playing a pummeler deck, it looks like. So they're probably playing cards that 
obviously generate them a lot of energy. Pummeler being one. Good thing is Deputy actually does deal with that, unless they have the one green mana spell that's going to give it Hexproof. I'm going to spend that. Spend that. Okay, well. You wanna, if you want to pump it up. Hmm. Okay, well. I don't hate where we are here, right? I'm sure their energy burn spell easily dispatches our questing beast. But it's, I think it's really important that we hit mana number five. Oh, okay. All right. Land. Frill Mystic. We can't cast Frilled Mystic, but it... I don't even know what we pitch here, right? I think it's better to keep Frilled Mystic in our hand, potentially, so we draw another island, or a blue source, for that matter. And then we'll just pitch the Serpapod. Serpapod lets us... We can cast it next turn, but I I don't think at this point we ever want to be casting. Yeah, just... Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so that's that's great, right? So we're making three threes. We actually have we actually got a blue mana, so we can start countering spells. Uh, we can block their harbinger with the with the wolf that just came down. They probably have an ember cleave in their hand. Oh yeah, they one hundred percent have an ember cleave in their hand. 100%. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. That was good. I mean, it's it's kind of easy when you know what they have in their hand. But, yeah. We, uh, we drew correctly that game, and we were able to punish our opponent. But, I mean, nonetheless, it was a great game. So, all right. Well, let's talk about this deck. All right, everybody, welcome to the tune-up. Let's talk about this Narcbow deck that Salty submitted to us. Again, this is a great deck. It's it's a lot of fun to play. You do get to surprise a lot of people with the ability from Vivian's Arcbow, you know, being able to just instantly put a creature into play, depending on how lucky you are when you look at the top, uh, the top of your library. Um, but with that being said, you know, you do need to make sure that you are hitting cards, um, you know, or creatures on top of your library to be putting into play. But that also means you do need to be making sure that you're actually putting in, uh, you're hitting enough of land drops. So land drops, super important, super, super, super important here. Um, so we do have to make sure, again, that that is something that we are doing. So um, we do have 24 land. I think 24 land is the correct amount in a deck like this. Um, however, uh, I, I just don't think that the land type uh, are the lands that we actually have in the deck are particularly the right lands. Um, you know, we do have access to uh, a pathway that we could be playing um, since since we're not playing any fabled passages in this deck right now. Um, depending on what we decide to do, we may we may go the route with fable passage so we can actually thin our deck into, you know, different basics. Or we could look into playing the green-white pathway again because the pathway is 
basically a free dual land. If we're gonna be playing forest, we could just replace it with four of those anyway. That's gonna give us easier access to the green um, and the white mana. We could actually potentially take the planes out as well if we do that, because also we're adding four additional white sort or three additional white sources in our deck um, to, um, again, smooth out our draws. And then, um, so let's, let's really just think about what we're doing here. So our top end is Tulsimir. Tulsimir is a great, uh, a great top end. Um, there's really not a lot of, you really don't want to go much higher than five in a deck like this, because again, you have to make sure you're hitting your land drops. And then, you know, if you draw those, those really heavy top end cards, then you can't really do anything with them because you're not wanting to discard them at that point you're wanting to play them so it's just really a, it's an overall you know balance that you have to work with so some things that i would consider you know in this deck i i do think questing beast is great um i don't know if i'd want to play four of them in this deck um you know we played a deck similar to this that had some other cards in it like kira glass spinner i don't really know if kira's uh, the right fit. I didn't know if it was the right fit then. It, I think it did work for us. I'd have to go back and watch the video again. But, um, you know, we played cards like Mothra. I do think Mothra is a great uh, fit for this deck because it, it gives extra value to all of your creatures. Uh, again, now, this particular deck, since we're playing best of one, um, I don't think we're actually looking to be playing Prowling Serpapard. Now, it, you know, it is a great three drop. I just think that there's better three drops that we could be playing, like uh, Uro, for example, great three drop. That's going to, you know, draw us more cards. It's going to get us more land. That's going to get us more life so we could actually live, uh, you know, potentially against uh, some of these aggro decks. But uh, I know Salty built this most likely with playing best of three. I know they made Mythic with this deck. Uh, you know, they have a sideboard in this deck. We're not going to worry about the sideboard at all because, again, we play best of one. So I know one of the cards we're probably going to take out is the Serpa part because I don't think it really is going to fit in with what we're trying to do. Um, we're I'm going to try to just go through here, find some value, and really just, you know, again, hope that we can uh, extend on uh, on what we're on what we're doing here and just gain a little bit extra value, you know, just just squeeze a little bit of extra juice out of the lemons um, and then just see what we can come up with. So let's do this. Let's uh, let's hop into our time machine and we will be back in just a few minutes and we'll see what we do with this deck. All right, see you soon. All right, through the magic of uh, YouTube and the magic of uh, <clears throat> technology, really, we are now looking at the new and improved, hopefully, version of Narcbo, you know, Narcbo version two. And what do we have? So the change we made, so first off, uh, obviously you're not seeing a sideboard anymore because again, we're not worried about sideboards in best of one. Um, we did make some of the changes that I had mentioned. Um, one of the other uh, cards I did add in here was a Yasharn. Uh, again, a lot of base, you know, different sacrifice decks and, and whatnot. Um, this does prevent that from happening. It is just a one of, so it's not necessarily something that we're gonna draw a lot of most likely but if we do draw it nonetheless it is just a big 4-4 beater that actually does thin our deck um so again is pretty good now um because we're playing yasharn um we did potentially first out take the planes out but then we went when we went back and added yasharn since this does search out a basic forest and a basic planes we put in the planes back so we end up taking out just four four uh four forests or the four pathways uh, again, this is just, I think, better than playing forest. Um, the basic force in the deck do help, you know, turn on things like Sun Petal Grove, but I, we're only playing two of those, so I don't really think it's going to be a huge factor, you know, since, again, we just really care about getting an untapped green source for our Lanor Elf. Uh, other notable cards that you're going to see, we're going to play, we're playing one of Night of Autumn, uh, just in case. We are playing three Uros. Again, Uro is great because, you know, it has 83 lines of text. Uh, we're going to be drawing a card. We're going to be putting extra land into play. We're going to be gaining three life. Um, we can be escaping it to do it again. And then also, uh, we did put in a couple of Mothras. Mothras, again, especially in combination with Uro, is great. You're going to get extra value out of all your creatures. Uh, they, they have to, you know, focus on killing this before they focus on your other creatures. If they happen to board wipe you, all of your other creatures are going to be to play except for Mothra. And then they're all going to gain flying because this does say whenever a creature you control without flying dies, 
return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. So uh, again, really, really good. Uh, we could have done crazy things with, you know, if we wanted to add Solemnity with Mothra, but again, we're not trying to do crazy shenanigans here. We are just trying to focus on the creature aspect with Vivian's Arc Bow. Uh, we did take out the Serpapards, like mentioned. We did drop down one Questing Beast again. We did that mainly to fit in the Yasharn um, because uh, I don't really think we need four Questing Beasts in this deck because we want to generate value in a lot of other places. So, uh, yeah, so this is the deck we, we decided against the Fable Passage. Didn't really want to do that. Uh, thought about putting in, like my previous build, some Land War Visionaries uh, for extra mana value. But I think with the Uros, I think we're going to generate enough value as well. You know, we took out a, you know, we just really cut, we cut some fat in the deck. Uh, and, I, and I feel like we actually are going to make the deck a little more consistent um, to where we're not stumbling on our mana and potentially just hitting our bombs. Because again, you know, combinations of Tulsimir with Nightpack Ambusher every turn um, is going to be great because whenever a wolf enters the battlefield, we get to gain three life and we get to fight. Um, that's going to be a really sick combination. So uh, yeah, this is Narcbow version two. So let's get into the gameplay and see how we do with this version. All right. See you guys at the wrap up. All right. Well, game one, what a quick pairing, quick, quick pairing. Um, Salty, I hope you are okay with the changes that we're making and we're going to give a shot to. Um, let's see if this hand can potentially get us somewhere. We do get to two into four. So I, I don't hate that. Oh, we're playing against, we're playing against stupid goblins, right? Stupid, stupid goblins. All right, so they're on the what looks to be the Iron Crag feet plan. No thanks. No thank you. Oh, you didn't want to attack? Did we attack with the Paradise Druid? No. I do know that would come back, but... We really just have to race past a a Muxus, right? If they have another Muxus in their hand, I mean, we're might be losing this. Oh, they're just they're just all in here, aren't they? Uh, three... Oh. Goblins! Get out of here! Get out of here, goblins! Oh, it feels so good. Goblins! Oh, they're like cockroaches. You know they're just gonna keep coming back, right? But... For right now, we don't see them anymore. For right now, we've, we've dealt with the problem. Alright, next game. All right. Ooh. Game number two slash five. I am Joe is our opponent. What are we going to be doing over here? Looks like a bit of the same as last time. Two into four or two into four. I think two into this four is a little bit better followed up by this four. So, are they playing dogs? They got the dog sleeves. Oh, stupid thought sees, really? 
Stupid thought sees. The, the paradise, paradise druid or the mothra, right? I'm okay with you taking the ambusher. Interesting. Strangely okay with you taking the ambusher there. Um, we are not going to attack here. They, so we actually just realized they didn't play a land last turn. I don't want this druid to get fatal pushed. Um, we're going to tap it next turn to play Tulsimir, but... Don't really know what our opponent is up to, right? Are they just genuinely... Oh, okay. So it's uh, like an aristocrat's deck. Um, I mean, white soldier. This one doesn't make a life linker. They know we have the Knight of Autumn. They probably have a Bastion in their hand, right? Okay. We could have we could have flashed this in in response, but I just don't think it's worth it right now. You just know they're gonna draw another Thought Seize. I feel like I feel like Thought Seize is coming three sometimes, and I feel like a uh, uh, ambusher just right off the top to kill this Blood Artist. Because again, it's a wolf. Okay, so. Give you a couple life back. Oh yeah, that felt that felt good. We're gonna start getting three life a turn, fighting every turn. Uh, it was a little unfortunate our opponent kept a one lander. Um, I guess a one lander double Thoughtseize hand is not horrible against some decks, but yeah, we got him. So next game. All right. Game number three slash six against Duress. We're getting really fast pairings. Opponent goes first. I don't hate this hand, right? We get to turn two Arcbow. We get to turn two Paradise Druid instead. Lotus Cobra, huh? Lotus Cobra. You're just going to gen Genesis Ultimatum us, aren't you, at some point? All right. What ridiculous card are you going to play this turn? Red Mana. Cultivate. Yep. This is a... What a weird Naya deck is this? Do we block? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna block that. Absolutely block that, right? I don't think there's ever a world where we don't take that trade. Okay. So, 
don't think we kill the... Uh, I don't think we're going to kill this exploration yet, right? We're going to see what happens. We, we could potentially kill it next turn. But I'd really like to get a little bit of value out of... Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. So they're not even trying to play the other. I feel like they should have they should have played the other one, right? So let's just end this fun right now. I mean, they did they did a lot that turn, but I, yeah, I just I just don't think you should have let that other one get exiled, right? I'm imagining the whole point of your deck would have been to try to do this, right? But we've never seen a deck like this. Um, well, it's been a long time since so we've seen somebody try to play Exploration, but maybe with some moot. They had enough mana to play this. They probably just couldn't go crazy like they did, and they risked it. But yeah, I think that was a misplay on their end. But all right, well, it's already time for the final boss, so we're getting some really fortunate pairings. So let's head in, see what happens. Final boss. I'm so stoked. This deck is sweet. Um, either way, right? Regardless of what happens. Ubuntu Solo. All right. You are our final boss. We finally get to play some Llanowar Elves into a Lurus deck. Okay. I don't hate this, right? So next turn we can Llanowar Elf into an Arc Bow. But what, what deck is our opponent playing, right? They're playing rogues? So Arcbow's huge against the deck that plays counter spells. And they realize that. So we are going to get a final, final boss against somebody. So ultimate final boss battle begin. All right, as promised, ultimate, ultimate final boss. Let's go. Five color druid. You better be playing five colors. You better be playing them five colors, right? We get to go first. We got a mulligan. This. this is an awkward draw. This is like the last, the last hand. Right. Oh. We have one additional land. What's better to keep, right? I think we get more value if we get rid of the questing beast. Alright, is this a is this an aura's deck? Play two more all seeds, right? Why did you not attack? Should have should have played that as a white source, right? gonna what are we gonna do over there I 
No, oh, you coward. We re I really need them to tap out. Like that is the goal. All right, let's uh speed the clock up a little bit. Yeah, I think we're going to keep on green. Yeah, we have uh we have turned the corner in uh damage land. All right, we're at 9. Okay. They're going to need to chump block. They've literally only cast one mana spells. Is this something that we counter? Yeah, I think we counter that, just in case. Yeah, so they're they're still on the chump block the chump block plan. Got to block at least one more. So 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't I don't think you mathed correctly there, five color druid. Maybe their their mathing gets more powerful as the the more colors show up in their deck. But yeah. Sweet. We just uh We just unlocked an achievement, right? Uh with this deck specifically, so. Alright, well, let's talk about this in the wrap-up. All right, everybody, welcome back to the wrap up and we killed it. We crushed it. Um, so the first set of games, we went one, uh, two and no one and two. We won one. We lost two. And I really do feel like we lost because we got, you know, not the best matchups and our opponents had some really sick top deck draws that we just couldn't really do anything about. So um, there is that, you know, sometimes again, you just can't do anything. I do feel like we actually misplayed a couple times. Um, so if, uh, you know, if I, if I do mention some things, I know some, I think, uh, we arc bow or we should have arc bowed sometimes when we actually had cards in our hand, uh, for whatever reason, th those games, I felt, uh, for whatever reason, I was thinking that we had to discard a creature card, not any card in our hand. So, um, there is that. And again, that was just based on the fact that I was, I, whenever I, whenever I activate cards like Vivian's arc bow, stuff like that, um, I always, you know, revert back to the old card survival of the fittest where you actually had to discard a creature card to go get a creature card. So for whatever reason, even though I know, I know, and I even went back and I watched the, um, the introduction and I know I even read the card pretty much verbatim and it says discard a card. It doesn't say discard a creature card. So, um, yeah, that one's on me. Um, it, however many times I did that, I don't remember how often that came up. Um, but I do feel like we did do that. So if it is mentioned in the comments, I'm literally just going to refer people to watch the wrap up. Um, yeah, cause I, again, I know, I know we messed up and, you know, and, and again, it happens whenever we play, you know, different decks every day and we don't focus on, uh, the same strategies. It's, it's really hard to keep up with, uh, different mechanics. So, um, but yeah, I really do like this deck a lot. I do like the tricks that we can pull off with Vivian's arc bow. I do think night pack ambusher is one of those cards. That's not a fair magic card. Uh, I do think it, I mean, I do think it's, it's 
well designed. I really don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just do. I do feel like that it's really hard to deal with. You know, flashing it at the end of your opponent's turn, and then from that point on, you're just making um, an additional three three every turn um, is just really really powerful. It's 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 unfair in a sense that it's it's a well designed card and it's just hard to deal with. Not the fact that it's it should get banned or anything. I'm not saying that. I don't think it needs to be banned. Um, but I do like the uh, I do like the the uh, few other cards that we added to this deck. The Mothras I feel like are really good addition to the deck. Um, you know they do allow us to get in and um, they get extra value out of our cards. Uh, the Knight of Autumn, the one of I think is great. Uh, the Yasharn we didn't really get to experiment with, but I do feel like Yasharn is a great. It's a four mana four four. Um, so stat wise, it's the same as Questing Beast, but text wise, obviously Questing Beast is a little bit better, but um Yusharn is going to be one of those cards where um every once in a while uh conditionally the value will be really good so i, I do think like it, it is worth keeping in there and uro again uro is always a great car is always a great card especially in a in a uh bant build so no reason not to include uros just to get the extra value uh, again it's gonna it's gonna ramp our land up which is gonna allow us to vivian's arc bow for more mana earlier on and then on top of that, it is going to draw us more value and gain us more life to keep us alive. And hey, on top of everything, we went 5-0 uh, with our version. We beat goblins because goblins, like I said, uh, are like cockroaches. You may you may keep stomping them, but they're going to keep showing up, um, you know, when you don't want to see them. So, yeah, you know. And uh, so a huge shout out to, uh, to Salty uh, for submitting this Snarkbow deck. Uh, again, I apologize for taking a few days off. You know, it was Christmas, uh, spent time with the family, uh, didn't go anywhere, stayed home, obviously, because what's going on in the world. And then we're going to blame yesterday on my good friend, Florida Melton. Um, obviously, based on his name, lives in Florida. I live in Texas. And he just showed up. My, he just showed up at my house, you know, mask on and everything and decided to pay me a visit. So, um, you know, best friends got to say hi to their best friends every once in a while even if there is a uh, crazy pandemic going on in the world but you know we stayed safe and masked up and it was a uh, it was an amazing time after uh you know not seeing each other for about five years so glad i got to spend uh spend a half a day with him so again his fault for no video yesterday but he did he did do the uh one chip challenge which uh we did record and we'll get that up on his channel and uh yeah and his uh his mom in law knitted me this sweet, sweet, sweet beanie, which I'm super stoked about. It is super warm and super ginormous. Covers the ears really nice, which I love. And uh yeah, thank you so much. Uh Florida Melton. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Salty, for this. Again, only a couple days left in Decktember. If you want to be considered, join the Discord, head down to Decktember channel, and grab the template from the pin post. And uh, again, if you like the channel, like, comment, subscribe, check out the links down below, the Twitch link, the uh, Discord link, and the Patreon link. So with that being said, guys, everybody, please stay safe, and we will see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel. Thank <laughs> you.